Tagal Mary and welcome back to my channel for today. Sa wakas, pag-uusapan na natin ng mas malalim, mas kumpleto ang bagong-bagong Vivo V21 5G. Again, ulitin ko lang, they launched two new smartphones para sa kanilang Vivo V21 series. Meron tayong Vivo V21 5G and the Vivo V21e na pag-uusapan natin next week. Actually, specs-wise, medyo marami silang similarities pero may difference din naman sila which is why I decided na paghiwalayan silang dalawa because again, they are two different smartphones. Okay, before we start, gusto ko lang sabihin, guys, that the past few years, napansin ko, when it comes to releasing new smartphones, si Vivo, they really focused on giving us eye-catchy colorways, attractive design, with premium built quality. So, I guess Vivo really caters to those people who wants their smartphones to match their lifestyle. So, pagdating sa mga smartphones na merong loud, colorful, premium built with good set of cameras. Isa sa mga brands na talagang papasok sa mga isip natin ay Vivo. This is if you are not looking for smartphones na meron ding attractive price point. I mean, don't get me wrong guys, I'm pretty sure alam nyo rin naman ito na the smartphone industry here in the Philippines, there's a lot of competition. Medyo alam nyo naman, pamurahan, palakihan ng battery, pagandahan ng chipset, at syempre, pagandahan ng design. So yes, we have budget phones, mid-range phones, and flagship devices, but pansin ko, ang pinaka-aggressive talaga dito sa ating bansa ay mga mid-range devices. So with those being said, kamusta Kamusta, Mary, ang Vivo V21 5G? How will it compete sa market, lalo na na may maraming affordable smartphones ngayon na kayang ibigay yung specs na ino-offer nito for a lower price point? So yes, on this video, malalaman nyo definitely yung ating pros and cons kung bakit mo siya dapat bilhin at bakit hindi mo siya dapat bilhin. Let's start with the design. As I said doon sa ating unboxing and first impressions video, the design is very similar doon sa kanyang predecessor which is the Vivo V20 series. Medyo mas may yellow hue lang itong phone na to. Unlike doon sa Vivo V20 na medyo may pagka-pinkish yung hue niya. Mata ang finish ng kanyang likod so expect nyo na na hindi siya magiging ganun ka dumihin tignan kahit na walang case. Yung Vivo V21 5G hindi siya kalakihan lalong hindi rin naman siya kaliitan. It's your typical mid-range phone size. You can definitely use this phone one-handed, kaso lang kapag hahawakan nyo na yung bandang ibabaw ng display, you might struggle a bit, lalo na kung medyo maliit yung kamay nyo. It's a bit disappointing lang na meron siyang single bottom firing speaker, unlike its competitors na stereo speakers ang labanan. Kung curious kayo about its audio quality, ipaparinig ko yan sa inyo after this clip. If you're gonna watch some YouTube videos, Netflix, ang kanyang volume ay actually loud enough for you to be able to hear whatever you are watching, lalo na indoor. And yes, there is no headphone jack dito sa Vivo V21 5G. But thank goodness, sa uh, box naman ng Vivo V21 5G, meron siyang libreng dongle. Pero syempre, when you are using the dongle, hindi mo pwedeng magamit ang phone na ito while you are charging. I mean, it's 2021 na. I'm pretty sure some of us are already using a wireless earphones. Kung kayo ay gumagamit pa rin ng wired let me know kung bakit. Wala namang problema dun because una sa lahat, there is zero latency. Pero I'm curious guys, beside that, kung ba't pa rin kayo gumagamit. So let me know in the comment section below. In terms of the SIM tray, meron kayong option to use two SIM cards or kaya naman one SIM card and a micro SD card for additional storage. Both SIM cards na pwede mang ilagay sa device ay pwedeng 5G na. So hindi kayo dapat magalala kung anong slot ba yung dapat yung paglagyan ng 5G SIM card. Ngayon, baka hinahanap niya yung side-mounted fingerprint sensor. Actually, wala tayo nun kasi itong Vivo V21 5G ay merong in-display fingerprint sensor katulad ng Vivo V21e. And yeah, it is AMOLED. Actually, knowing Vivo, bihira silang magbigay ng side-mounted fingerprint sensor sa mga mid-range devices nila. Which is actually a pro sa halos mid-range phone lineup nila, bihira sila talaga magbigay ng phone na IPS LCD display. I think it's their top priority na magbigay ng magandang display, again, on their mid-range lineup. 
And speaking of the display, it has 6.44 inches of AMOLED screen na mayang 1080p Full HD Plus resolution and a 90Hz refresh rate. If you're gonna ask me, hindi ko gusto na may dual drop notch pa rin tayo because it's a pretty dated design and bihira ka na talaga makakakita ng ganitong klase ng display. But on the brighter side, kung kayo naman ay naka Vivo V20 pa, it's an improvement definitely dahil 90Hz or higher refresh rate na ang meron tayo dito instead of the regular 60Hz refresh rate. Mas responsive syempre at mas smoother yung experience ko dito sa Vivo V21 5G as to compare it doon sa kanyang predecessor. Mas manipas rin yung ating side bezels lalo na yung kanyang chin. Solid na solid pa rin yung kanyang picture quality and definitely mas accurate ang ating display dahil nga doon sa kanyang AMOLED display. Ngayon, pag-usapan natin yung cameras ng Vivo V21 5G. Actually, ito ang pinaka-main focus ng smartphone na to. Kung baga sa marketing, ito ang pinaka-selling point niya. Selfie-centric daw itong Vivo V21 5G. Bakit? Kasi po may headlights yung ating Vivo V21 5G. O, di ba? Parang kotse lang. Saan ka ba kakakita ng phone na may headlights, di ba? <laughs> Actually, this is what I like about Vivo. When it comes to the camera department, they really have something new to offer. Although, syempre, very specific yung kanyang target market. Because, syempre, hindi naman lahat ng mukha ay pang selfie. <laughs> Magbaliktad yata. Guys, not everyone likes to take selfies. Yun yung gusto kong sabihin, okay? Actually, on paper, wala masyadong improvement yung Vivo V20 to the Vivo V21 5G. Meron tayong 64 megapixels na main sensor, capable of optical image stabilization, 8 megapixels para sa ultra-wide camera niya, at 2 megapixel para sa kanyang macro camera. And lastly, para sa selfie shooter niya, meron tayong 44 megapixels. And yes, merong OIS and EIS capability ang ating front camera. Something that you will rarely get sa mga mid-range devices natin ngayon. Actually, yung kanyang overall camera UI, wala naman masyadong nagbago. Medyo hindi ko lang nagustuhan that for us to access again the ultra-wide camera, kailangan pa natin pumunta doon sa kanyang lens menu para magamit natin itong camera na ito instead of just swiping the One X 2X toggle. So, anong bago, Mary, sa camera UI niya? Actually, again, sinabi ko nga kanina na meron siyang dalawang LED flash in front. So, paano natin to ma-access? All you have to do is of course, flip the camera to selfie. Sa pinaka-upper left, makikita nyo dito yung flash logo. Click that and may tatlo tayong option. Pwedeng auto, aura, spotlight, and off. Para sa aura, it works like a ring light. Parang medyo may pagkahilo effect siya na kung saan iilawan niya yung buong mukha mo. Very subtle light lang. Hindi as strong as the light na binibigay sa atin kanina na pinakita ko ng dalawang LED lights. May isa pa tayong klase ng flash which is again the spotlight. Ito na yung sinasabi ko na dalawang headlight. Este, dalawang spotlight. This is if ang concern nyo ay pagtitig ng selfies lalo na sa gabi. Actually, it's very handy. Pwedeng pwede rin siyang gamitan as a flashlight. Lalo na kunwari you are on a date at night and gusto mong ayusin yung makeup mo, sarili mo. It's definitely very doable. Bukod doon, marami pa siyang iba't ibang klase ng portrait style filters, light effects na pwede natin gamitin. Something that you guys saw doon sa Vivo X60 natin. Now, for the night mode, yes, pwede rin tayo guys mag-take ng photos using the night mode. Pwede natin itong gamitin on its main camera and sa kanyang super wide angle lens. na improve naman niya ang brightness Pero, hindi may iwasan guys na ma-retain sa ibang shots yung grainy or noise niya. Now, how about yung stabilization ng front camera? Actually, as what Vivo promised, stable naman enough yung mga video footages natin using the Vivo V21 5G. Pero, syempre, may crop na mangyayari every time that we will be turning on the steady face. So, medyo lalapit talaga yung shot sa mukha natin. So, medyo lalayuan natin yung angle. In terms of the selfie photos, especially at night, laking tulong guys nung dalawang LED flash na ginamit ko dito sa photos na to. And even the beauty mode, hindi siya mukhang artificial, which is actually good. Portrait shots were okay, although may mga parts lang na hindi ganun kaganda ang kanyang subject to background separation. So far, it did the job naman. So, okay naman sa akin ang mga portrait shots. Photos taken from its main camera, okay naman sila. Lalo na if outdoor shots. Although medyo nawawala or nagbabago lang yung kulay every time that we will be zooming in. Pero impressed naman ako sa kanyang zooming capability dahil hindi masyado 
masyadong nagkaroon ng noise. Now for night shots, actually pwede kayong gumamit ng mga filter katulad ng ginamit ko dito. But honestly speaking, I prefer more yung mga night photos natin using the selfie camera kisa doon sa kanyang rear camera shots. Now for the video mode, dito tayo ay naka 1080p resolution at naka turn off yung kanyang video stabilization. As you can see, it really is a bit shaky habang naglalakad ako on the way to the parking and nung tinurn on ko na siya, nag-crap lang ng konti yung video but it did help. Now, setting aside the cameras, kamusta naman ang capability ng device para sa kanyang chipset? Actually, yung iba dito, first time na narinig yung chipset na ginamit sa kanya, which is again, the Dimensity 800DU chipset na merong dual mode of 5G. At syempre, meron siyang 8GB of RAM plus 3GB of extended RAM and 128GB of internal storage. So, ano yung ibig sabihin ng 3GB of extended RAM? Actually, ganito yan. Ibig sabihin nito guys, 3GB of phone storage can be used to extend the RAM. Anong purpose nito kung extended na siya? For example, yung phone natin, it's running out of RAM. Meaning, bumabagal na siya, hindi na rin ganun kaganda mag-multitasking sa kanya. And now, it's gonna use 3GB of its internal storage to make things run smoothly. Hindi ibig sabihin nito guys na i-add natin siya, magkakaroon tayo ng 11GB of RAM. Hindi guys, we still have our regular 8GB of RAM. But when things did not run as smooth as we want, and again, as I said earlier, it's gonna use the extended 3GB of RAM para mas gumanda yung ating overall user experience. Actually, Actually, isa rin sa pinaka biggest upgrade ng Vivo V21 5G is of course the 5G capability. Last year, yung ating Vivo V20, hanggang 4G lang yung kaya niya. If 5G is a big deal for you when it comes to buying smartphones, this phone will definitely appeal to you. Actually, medyo mababa pa nga yung score or naging antutu score natin sa Vivo V20, 21 5G actually. 308,000 lang yung naging result niya. Yung nakita ko sa iba, lalo na sa mga reviews international, umabot ng 380,000. When it comes to my Genshin Impact gameplay, yes guys, diretso Genshin Impact agad para alam natin kung capable yung device o hindi. Huwag na tayong magpaligoy-ligoy pa. We all know naman na graphic intensive yung game. Fluid yung naging performance ng game dito sa Vivo V21 5G. Although, Siyempre, it's definitely a playable game, lalo na sa kanyang medium settings. Medyo noticeable lang yung frame drops at yung pag-init niya nung tinaas na namin yung kanyang settings. Yung 90Hz feature niya, depende to sa game na nilalaro nyo kung nagre-require siya ng GPU power or if nagsusupport siya ng 90Hz. Pero kung hindi naman, it won't really make a difference. For the operating system, it has the latest Funtouch OS 11.1 based on Android 11. Now, battery capacity. Actually, meron siyang 4,000 mAh and capable of 33W fast charging. Hindi lalagpas ng isang oras bago natin ma-fully charge yung device. Kaso, since the phone is actually capable of 90Hz refresh rate and 5G, of course, that adds up para mas madrain yung battery natin. Hindi tumagal ng isang buong araw yung device sa akin. So, ito yung nakikita kong downside sa kanya. Actually, on paper, kung titignan natin, it doesn't look like meron siyang big upgrade doon sa kanyang predecessor. But again, if you will be watching reviews like this one, you will see na nag-improve naman siya, lalo na doon sa mga internals niya, hindi lang doon sa specs on paper. Which is why whenever we buy smartphones, don't just rely on the specs na binabasa natin, but also on tech reviews katulad nito. Mas powerful yung chipset natin ngayon. Siyempre, if mas feature-proof yung device, 5G na siya instead of 4G, mas responsive at mas okay ang kanyang user interface, and uh, syempre, mas masarap ng mag-selfie sa smartphone na to. Syempre, sa kababa kakakita ng phone na may headlights, ba? Marami siyang magagandang upgrades, but not big upgrades. For the price, I know you might find it quite pricey for a device with this specs kasi syempre, we can find smartphones with better chipset, higher battery, but syempre, you won't have a better design, a really good selfie camera, and a 5G support. So, it's a matter of priority na lang ito sa isang smartphone. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. Again, it's your Tech and Mary, and see you on my next video. Bye!